from Bookman Experience. You're looking for Caribbean TV, it's where you are. Kabila, are you bobo? Welcome to the Marcus Garvey Institute's Marcus Garvey exhibit. My name is Shaka Barak. I am president of the Marcus Garvey Institute. Today marks the 125th anniversary of the birth of the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. He was born August the 17th, 1887. In fact, it was on a Wednesday. And so we're here honoring him by paying a tribute and by celebrating his birthday. Why? Because any time a leader has done as much as Marcus Garvey has for our people, we want to remember him because of the example, because of the role modeling that he's done because he has set a path and he has done some things that are worth emulating. So the Marcus Garvey Institute welcomes all of you inside of our house so you can see how we honor the alma Marcus Garvey and how you can be invited to be involved as well. Okay, what we're looking at here is the uh, place where the alma Marcus Garvey lived on Market Street. Uh, here he lived with uh, his older sister, Indiana, and inside of the home, there was a library that his father had built. And as a young boy, he spent many, many hours every day reading in his father's library. Um, another fact that we need to know is that Marcus Garvey's mother, um, Sarah Jane Richards, thought of Marcus Garvey as being a child who would be a leader of his people. Now imagine a child coming up where the parent believes that the child will be a leader and how much different they would uh, treat that child, the kind of things they would encourage that child to do. Marcus Garvey grew up being very brave. Uh, his mother was a businesswoman, so he was um, taught to be business-minded. But on the other hand, his father was a strong-willed man. And so he came up between this soft and warm mother and this hard, rock-hard father as he lived in St. Anne's Bay, Jamaica. When Marcus Garvey had traveled the world, he came uh, back to Jamaica and July the 20th, 1914, he formed the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League. And this is a membership certificate that all the members had. And ultimately, Marcus Garvey came to the United States after an outstanding invitation from Booker T. Washington. And he came here in 1916. By 1918, the UNIA was incorporated uh, and the Harlem Renaissance, the foundation for the Harlem Renaissance was being built. Most of the talented men and women in the African-American experience joined up with Marcus Garvey. The literary giants, the um, uh, J.A. Rogers and Hubert Harris and William Ferris uh, and women like Henrietta Vinton Davis and I'll tell you a little bit more about these members who had this type of membership certificate. Here is a picture of Marcus Garvey in a um, Ford uh, Model T. And you notice that he's being chauffeured. The reason was that he didn't drive. He spent all of his time reading and studying, so he didn't learn how to drive. And um, he would travel, as you can see these people surrounding him, with four secretaries wherever he went because he was constantly dictating information to them that he wanted them to write, to type, and, and so forth. He had so many uh, contacts throughout the world that he was constantly communicating, and so he didn't have time to be focusing on traffic uh, stop signs and uh, um, worrying about running into other people or people running into him. Somebody did that work for him. These men in uniform uh, the name of the auxiliary is called the African Legion, the Universal African Legion. Now, you're looking at men in uniforms, and quite naturally, the thought is that uh, these men are in the military. But the fact of the matter was that all of these men were trained in some trade. Some were engineers, some were carpenters, uh, some were mechanics. But everybody who wore a uniform in the UNIA uh, was taught some trade. And then they also were uh, taught uh, geography and uh, other uh, facts 
so that when they eventually would end up in Africa, they would be able to pro provide the service that was necessary for the re development of Africa. So they weren't just walking around in uniforms, parading and so forth. They were tradesmen. Uh, these men are what constituted the High Executive Council. These are the elected officials who came together in 1920 and in an international convention, they were elected to represent the leadership of the African world. Some were elected, uh, one was elected to be the uh, leader of the American Negroes, as they were called. Uh, the West Indian leadership is there. And the uh, Caribbean, uh, South America, Central American leadership is on that stand. Now there was one man who is in white. He was what is called the potentate. He was actually the ruler of uh, the race. Uh, his name was Gabriel Johnson. He was from Liberia. He was the mayor of Monrovia, Liberia. In fact, his granddaughter is now the president of Liberia, West Africa. Gabe. Now, likewise, these women that are part of the um, African Motor Corps, or the Universal African Motor Corps, they're not paramilitary in that sense. All of them were trained in uh, the area of transportation. They were the ones who were licensed chauffeurs. Uh, they would fix the vehicles if any of them broke down. They were mechanics. They could operate, they could work on trucks in any kind of form of transportation. So if the legions had to be moved somewhere, uh, then these women would make sure that the vehicles were uh, ready and uh, they would stay in good shape to take them where they had to go. Reliable source.